as you know, if you watch the channel, last week I sold a few guitars, so I'm online shopping at the moment. Full disclosure, I was online shopping this before I sold the guitars last week. My first GNL, this, I've never had a GNL before. Well, I suppose in the past, before I did this really, I was a bit of a snob, and it probably, if it didn't have Fender on, or Gibson on the headstock, I wasn't interested. Times are changing, I can tell you. Should we get the strings off and, um, and, and have a closer look? I can't go into any more detail, because as you know, I'm not a pickup expert, but that's what it looks like externally. So you're none the wiser, really, are you? I'm certainly not. I don't mean to be flippant, but I amaze myself sometimes with my stupidity. Well, that was a lot of waffle and nonsense already, wasn't it? Um, be warned, I do that. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Guitaristas. So, a new guitar, another affordable guitar. This is a GNL Asat Classic Tribute. This is the affordable version, uh, made in Indonesia. This one. My first GNL. This I've never had a GNL before. Never, never held one before. For some reason, they've been around since the late seventies. Since Leo Fender started the company, Leo himself, who I think we'll all agree, probably invented the electric guitar, and certainly designed the the Telecaster. He started GNL back in the late seventies in Fullerton in California, and they're still making guitars there in the USA as well. Uh, the more expensive ones, and this is the the affordable range from them, the Tribute. So yeah, we're going to take a close look at this today. We're going to, you know, do all the measurements, do all the nerdy stuff, take the strings off, take it apart, and poke it around, see what makes it tick. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. I've had a play already, and I'll be honest with you, it's all quite promising. I'm, I had no idea what to expect when I got this. Um, I got it. It's the start of a, a little series, actually, of, well, of affordable Telecasters that I can compare. I've been sort of aiming to do it for ages. Do you remember I got the Sire L7? No, sorry, T7, the Telecaster, isn't it? The Sire T7, or T-Style, should we say. It was over a year ago, I think. And I've been meaning to get some others in this price bracket to, to do the, the Compero. So, you know what? This was an, it wasn't an accident because I've been moving it for ages. But as you know, if you watch the channel, last week I sold a few guitars. So I'm online shopping at the moment. Uh, well, full disclosure, I was online shopping this before I sold the guitars last week. But anyway, you know, that was the plan. So I was online shopping and uh, I happened upon this one, in fact, on the Guitar Guitar website in the UK. Now, the retail price of these is about, around about 500 pounds, 550 pounds. So, you know, not on the cheaper scale of things. However, I came across this on the Guitar Guitar website for 279 pounds on a, on a silly January offer. So I just bought it. Thought, okay, let's get stuck in. Let's do that thing that I've been planning on doing for ages. So, yeah, this arrived and then, um, and then I went on the Anderton's website and I saw a, a limited edition Squire FSR classic vibe 60s in in olive green, <laughs> drab, drab olive, whatever it's called. So I bought that as well. So I've got that to follow up as well in, I don't know if I'll do it next week. Um, I'll sort of split this, these up over a period of a couple of months probably. I've got a Tokai on the way as well. I yeah, I have got a Tokai on the wall. Yeah, I've done a deal with the Tokai. And I'm looking at some others around about, you know, the 500 quid bracket. I thought it'd be fun. Might even get a Fender player in. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm waffling a bit already. I'm just telling you what I'm planning. So this is the first of a series of affordable Telecasters we're going to review over the next couple of months. And then we'll probably bring them all together. We'll put them all side by side and we'll do a comparison. and see what the differences are. And uh, 
that might be helpful if you're thinking of getting yourself an affordable T-style guitar. Okay. Well, that was a lot of waffle and nonsense already, wasn't it? Um, be warned, I do that. So if you're in a hurry, timestamps are in the description box. You can skip forward to something that is of particular interest to you, like what it sounds like or something. Okay. So do that. If you've got a little bit of time on your hands, go and grab a cup of tea and uh, come back and join me and we'll get stuck in. All right, let's do it. So, yeah, a little bit more about G&L, because, uh, you know, I'm, I've been aware of them, like I suppose most of us are really, us being us guitar nerds, I suppose. Um, but I've never owned one. I, I, I've, never, I've never been drawn to them. It's not a brand that I've been attracted to for whatever reason. But I suppose, well, I suppose in the past, before I did this really, I was a bit of a snob. And it probably, if it didn't have Fender on, or Gibson on the headstock, I wasn't interested. Times are changing, I can tell you. Um, so anyway, I'm, as I said, my first impressions of this is a good. G&L appears to have very much been Leo's new baby. And like Fender, before it, it was, I think, a bit, bit of a family business, really. and and obviously his thirst for improving, you know, designing stuff. Um, this was the platform for that, really. So, you know, the G&L Telecasters were, you know, he, he'd kind of improved some of the original designs. And they live on to this day in today's G&Ls, which is run what, since Leo's passing in 1991 by the McLaren family. It initially passed over to John McLaren and his sons. And his son, I think it's Dave, is still the CEO. CEO. Is it Dave? I've written it down somewhere. Yeah, Dave, I found it. CEO and President Dave McLaren still runs. So it's, I, it's funny because when I was thinking, oh, I do my research, I thought oh, it's probably been sold to someone else. But no, it's still in the original kind of the family. So which is nice. I think it gives it, it gives it something... <sighs> It adds something, doesn't it, really? Um, it adds something. They are, you know, in my research this morning sort of flagged up. They're not widely distributed, it said. You know, so well, they're a bit under the radar. Yeah, maybe they're a connoisseur's guitar. Certainly, my first impressions of this have been very good, particularly for a guitar that was... <laughs> Well, this one was so cheap. All right, the, you know, it's a 500 quid guitar. But as I said earlier, I got this very cheap. So, yeah, I'm, well, I'm, I'm impressed already. That was a little bit about the history of G&L. So let's have a look at what it's made of. <laughs> uh, it's a Telecaster shape, as you can see. However, it's got a nice belly carve on the back for fat geezers like me. It's got a string through body, bolt on neck. Typical Telecaster. Now, this one is made of poplar. There are four, four colours in this Asat Classic Tribute range. Um, two are made of poplar. This one, the gloss black. A metallic blue, emerald blue, or emerald, what's it called? Emerald blue metallic there. And there's two that are made of sassafras, which is a, a different wood. And I'll be honest with you, I've got to do my research on that. They're see-through, um, tobacco burst and a butterscotch blonde, okay? And they're all around about 500 quid, you know, retail in the UK, in the States, uh, around about uh, $550, $600, I believe, for this Indonesian range. And the US range, kind of around about uh, 1,300 English pounds, $1,700, I think. So they're the grown-up versions, but these are, the, these are the affordable ones for the likes of us. Um, looks nice. It's got a maple neck. It's a rock, uh, rock maple. Oh, sorry, I am to look at my notes today because my brain's not working. Hard rock maple neck and uh, a maple fingerboard. And um, we'll have a closer look at that in a minute after we've taken the strings off. Really nice, well, nice chunky looking medium jumbo frets. Medium C-shaped neck. Measurements coming up shortly. Um, and then, you know, all the hardware and stuff. Again, we'll look at all of that 
once the strings are off so we can have a have a close up nose. So yeah, should we do that then? Should we get the strings off and um and, and have a closer look? Oh before we do that, let's weigh it. Oh right, here we go. It didn't feel heavy. I think it was heavy, so I'm guessing it's a decent weight. Yeah, seven pound ten ounces, that's not bad for a telly, is it? 3.46 kilos, of course. Closer look at the frets first, I suppose. Yeah, real nice chunky, and they're really well finished. Uh, yeah, really well finished. No problems with that at all. There's nothing to report. They were, they were quite nicely polished as well. I've only just noticed that, actually. I played it already and it felt great and the setup was great out of the box so yeah fretwork's great you've just seen some close-ups so you can see what i'm talking about the the nut i was just looking they don't tell you what the nuts made out of on not on the gnl specs that i've been looking at anyway so i can't tell you what that's made out of the um what i can tell you is and i'll try and do a shot of this it's a hard rock maple neck, as I, as I said. It looks like, yeah, for sure. You can see, I'll show you a close-up shot. The fingerboard has been stuck on, like a rosewood board would be. Now, I only say that because in a lot of cases, I wouldn't say most cases because I don't know enough about it, but I always thought that maple necks were, you know, solid. That's why they have the skunk stripe on the back, isn't it? Because that's where, how they insert the truss rod. No skunk stripe. Truss rod's obviously uh, injected, put in that way, and then there's a maple fingerboard stuck on top. So there you go. That's an observation of mine. But um, it looks nice, feels nice. The tuners are are these die-cast ones uh, which do the job. And, um, and that's about that really. So let's, um, let's look at the neck profile and measurements. Here's the neck profile and measurements at the first fret. And here's the neck profile and measurements at the 12th fret. It looks like a kind of a flattish C, doesn't it? What GNL say about the this Leo Fender designed Telecaster is that it was his final word on the Telecaster. There were some innovations of his uh, Leo Fender design pickups. We'll talk about those in a second. And this ashtray bridge, as you can see, it's got six brass saddles as opposed to the original three brass saddles. Which so presumably Leo thought that was a an improvement. And I like that design. I must say I like the three saddle design, but this is quite good. Brass saddles, yeah, definitely my favourite. The, um, the pickups are, um, I'm going to have to look at my notes again, uh, MFD, was it say MFD, MFD? Yeah, ma magnetic field design. Um, these have got ceramic bar magnets in these. And um, yeah, Leo Fender designed these. So let's take some readings. Let's start on the bridge. The bridge is 5.98 kilo ohms. And that's uh, just over four Henrys. And then the neck, where's the neck reading? Yeah, f just well, 5.09K, 3.46 Henrys. So um, I'm not used to <laughs> measuring single coils so much, so I can't, off the top of my head, think where they, where they figure in the scheme of things. Um, but anyway, that's what they are. We'll pop the scratch plate up and the control plate off. I will. I was did notice that the the switch feels a little bit cheap and wobbly. As you can see that. Yeah, that doesn't feel great. Let's um, let's undo this and see what's underneath. This uh, controls controls first. Oh, that's quite tidy. 
um, um, you know, cloth covered wire. Alpha pots and made in Korea switch. I can't verify that they're 250k. Um, I can't actually, as usual, the the only identifying marking I can see is three, two, one on both of them. Um, the cap there, there's no markings on that one, and this little uh, cap that jumps the center and the hot lug on the volume control says 201 there you go that's that it's all nice and tidily done though let's now let's pull the scratch plate up oh <laughs> i should have i for some reason i thought that was going to come up with it but of course it's not idiot because as we all know they are screwed to the body. There we go. A little bit of slack there, I think. There you go. It's just got a. You can see that it's got a. Don't know where the earth tag's going to. It's got a little bit of foam stuck onto the bottom of it and two screws. That's, um, yeah, it's a different design pickup. And um, I can't go into any more detail because as you know, I'm not a pickup expert, but that's what it looks like externally. There you go. It's not a lot of use this really, is I'm pointing stuff out that I just don't know anything about. So you're none the wiser really, are you? I'm certainly not. We'll put it back before anyone realises the pointlessness of all this. I don't mean to be flippant, but I amaze myself sometimes with my stupidity. Okay, we'll put that back. There's nothing to see there. So what I have noticed there is that all the screws are, are nice and straight and the pick guard's a little bit cheap looking. It's just a single ply bit of white plastic. Um, okay, now, if I can get these screws out with it. Yeah, I can get these screws out without mucking around with the saddles so let's do that okay dokey so that's what that one looks like underneath chaps pickup experts if you've never seen a a GNL pickup before. Let's do a shot of that. So yeah, I don't I don't know very much about pickups, but I can see that that looks it's quite different in the way that that's made. I think, isn't it? That's it, let's put the strings back on, or a new set of strings on, I'm gonna put the old ones back on. Let's put a new set of strings back on and see what it sounds like. Yeah, see you in a minute. Okay, unplugged. Sounds nice and bright. Sounds right. I'm plugged in, Princeton 65 as usual. It sounds like this. That's the bridge, just roll it off a bit.
neck. Together. Volume works well. Tone. Bad, is it? For a uh, what was it, two hundred two hundred seventy nine pound guitar? Put a bit of that on. Headstock and on the monitors up there, it looks it looks quite good. I like it. It's quite it looks like a bottle opener. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's nice, anyhow. It's quite distinctive. It's growing on me. we are the GNL Asset Classic Tribute. Bit of a tongue twister, really nice guitar though, really nice affordable guitar. Uh, yeah, didn't know what to expect, very pleasantly impressed. Yeah, not surprised, impressed is the word. 
it feels it feels really solid it feels robust it doesn't i mean i suppose 500 pound isn't cheap we i think we do to an extent have to recalibrate our brains sometimes well i'm in the process of that anyway because a cheap guitar now a cheap guitar is 150 quid a couple of hundred dollars isn't it and they can be fantastic can't they so 500 quid 600 odd dollars maybe now we should be we should be expecting really well made guitars and i suppose what i can say about this then is that it doesn't doesn't disappoint at all there's well, i tell you what I, the things that i i don't even say I don't like about them because they're completely forgivable the the things i like least about this guitar the switch wobbles a little bit uh, and I forgot, oh yeah, I was going to say, I forgot the other thing is, the only other thing that I'm not a fan of is these style die-cast tuners. But I don't, I don't think that's relevant because they stay in tune and they work fine. I just prefer, I, just, I think I just prefer the old vintage Cluson style tuners on stuff like Telecasters, really, because that's what they were originally. And I'm, you know... I like the old vintage stuff, don't I? Which is why I like this bridge. But I think this this six uh, barrel saddle, six saddle, six brass saddle ashtray bridge is great. Um, and what I've noticed, what I've noticed, one of the things I've noticed, what I've noticed this week, it's kind of not a, a fancy design. It's just kind of like a pure... It's got six saddles instead of three, although they have got slots in, so they've got string guides in, which is just common sense. It makes sense, doesn't it? So there's definitely an improvement. Um, you know, you see some designs of this with six where they've got all weird stuff going on. <laughs> I'm not a fan of weird stuff, you know that. Things I forgot to say about this earlier, I forgot to say about the scale length, which is a standard Fender scale length, 25 and a half inch. And it's got a nine and a half inch radius fingerboard. Uh, and I didn't mention the, the, the neck finish, but presumably you've seen that anyway. It's just a really nice satin finish. Really comfortable neck. And it's not, it's not big and it's not small. It's a definite medium and it's comfortable. It's not too fat. So I think it would... I think everyone would be able to play that. With no one would be going, "Oh no, that's too thin," or "or it's too fat." So, and it's got a normal shape to it. It's nothing odd about the shape. So, yeah, good. So, yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, I really like it. Now, as I said earlier, this is going to be the first of a uh, a series of uh, you know five hundred quid T style guitars. Following up this one that we did ages ago, I do you remember the Sire Larry Caster, as I called it, the T7, and uh, I've already bagged a couple more. Here's a little teaser, and another one. And uh, I've got my eye on some others, so we can make up a little, you know, a little, I don't know how many, half a dozen, all in the 500 quid range. So I think I'm going to get a Fender player in, although that's a little bit more than 500. But that's essentially what these are these are, are battling against, aren't they? You know, if you if you're thinking of getting a a Telecaster, the cheapest Fender is a Fender player from Mexico, and uh, and then you've got a whole range of of great um, contenders to the throne or whatever. So and this is a, well a great start. But what we'll do is we'll review some of the others and then we'll get them all together and we'll we'll compare them and and we'll look at you know the fine detail and where their strengths and weaknesses are and uh, if nothing else it'll be fun and um, I can buy some more guitars and keep the circle of guitars turning over. Yeah, good. I've enjoyed I've enjoyed this guitar and uh, I've enjoyed your company and. Um, I'm glad we're at the end of it because this week my brain wasn't working. 
It wasn't firing on all cylinders. I'm amazed. I'm amazed I got away with it, quite frankly. Some weeks you come in and you, the cameras are rolling and you go, it just, you know, I wasn't present. I think it's all right, though, isn't it? There you go. Well, look, thanks for joining us again. Come back next week. I don't know if I'm going to do another Telecaster next week or something else. I haven't decided. I want to keep you guessing. Come back, same time, same place, next week and find out. Look forward to it. See you then. Cheers. Ta-da. Ta-da.